four. So just to go back to this example four, now we've collected information in any way that we want, but remember collecting the information on its own means very little to us if we can't actually process that information in some way. So in order to get to the responses that we that we are going to receive for the form, you'll see there's a tab that calls itself responses. Click on responses and you'll see here are the responses I've received so far. And what Google does is it'll try and based on the types of questions that you've asked, it's going to draw up little graphs. It'll give you um, a breakdown of the responses. You have a number of options. So I'm going to go back to that. Um, that first form that that you had to complete. Let me just quickly grab that one. I'm going to pull it up in here. So here's the form that I built for that, just to show you how this this one would look. So here I've got a linear question. How would you rate your knowledge of G Suite? And I said one to five, and you are the option still learning. Good luck teaching me anything. Um, I'm happy with that question. I can click here, another linear question, and here I've got my um, my multiple choice questions. Uh, not multiple choice, the, the um, checkbox questions. Now, when I go to responses, you've got different ways of looking at the responses, and the tabs are here at the top. So if my first thing I want to have a look at, what do people say? How would they rate their knowledge of G Suite? I'm going to click on the question and I'll see. OK, so these are the responses I received. I received a total of nine responses and here they are individually. So three people said four, three people said one, two people said three and one person said five. And now we can click on next. And again, now we can go and analyze all of these things. Um, so a question by question look at what the people said. Individual allows you to have a look at the individual questions. So yeah, I see the first person answered everything and thinks they're amazing. That was my answer. And the second person, they attended all four fundamentals and they actually regard their own knowledge as being quite good. The third person um, is quite in the middle. They only attended Google Fundamentals once. So having going and revised reviewing the video recordings we made for two, three, and four is hopefully going to boost that three um, to a higher to a higher ranking, and so forth and so forth. Um, this isn't entirely useful because I haven't actually asked them the key questions like what's your name and surname to be able to know who it is that is telling me these things. So. Um, Again, the design of this form was not was intentionally anonymous. I didn't want to put people in the position where I wanted to see what um, Francina's one was or Tamsin or Lynette or Andrea, what they said about their um, their ability with Google. It was supposed to be anonymous, but very often when you collect information, you can't have it be anonymous. You want them to to um, to actually have a key and or give you feedback based on who they are. So those are usually your first questions, name, surname. And then the next one I want to look at, if we're going to go back to our example form and our questions, and we'll get to the responses, becomes a little bit more, I suppose, especially when we get to the quiz, the responses become quite an important little thing to look at. When we are collecting information, one of the most useful ways to identify people on the internet is with their email address. Now, what you can do, of course, is we can add a question. So we're going to have name and surname. And we'll add a question that says email. And this will automatically give us the short answer option. And remember, when we go to response validation, and this is an important little trick to remember, to go to response validation, and then you select text, contains, or not text, contains, we're going to select email address. And then they have to enter a valid email address. 